It's the NFL on EA Sports, and today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Carolina Panthers, and it's coming up next on Madden Football. And we welcome all of our viewers inside the place that the folks around here like to call the Volts, and that's Bank of America Stadium in Uptown Charlotte. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Carolina Panthers. And a welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. kicker Chris Boswell and off we go from uptown Charlotte on the return Andre Roberts from his end zone and they'll get him down right around the 25 actually the 26 officially so a net gain of one there so here are the Panthers now for their opening drive under center will be the Southern California native standing at 6'4", Sam Darnold. And the thing with Sam Darnold is we know the skill set is there. May not be the most mobile or strongest arm quarterback in the league, but usually plays with really good poise and at his best, like a point guard in basketball, able to move around and distribute the rock. Play action. It's Darnold. Oh, he's going to take a shot right away. Oh, into a sea of defenders and intercepted. Picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick. There he goes left side. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six for a Steeler touchdown. Well, on the opening drive, he was looking for a big chunk play. Unfortunately, that time the secondary was ready for it. Charles picked it off. Not only that, they take it the other way for points. Homework, preparation, research, it all comes back to that, BJ. Scouting your opponent, not just the players, but the coaches, too. And seeing what they call to begin a game, find out their tendencies. They recognize the early deep ball was part of their opposing game plan, and they weren't caught off guard when it showed up. Boswell good with the extra point, and it's now a 7-0 game. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. Here's Roberts to bring it out of the end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Panthers coming back out onto the field for their second drive. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. Launches deep. A jump ball, and this is caught. A big pick up of 38. We always talk about the guy who came off the play, but we got caught in a ran it. How about the elements of going to making a big play? This one in particular, able to scan the field. Pocket held up nicely. What a terrific job by the offensive line. The route well run, and the football right on the money. Darnold on first down. And he'll go right back to Moore, complete again. And they'll work this down inside the 30. They'll run it here. This is Deontay Foreman. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. 
Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. A quick throw there going to be batted away and incomplete. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. Now it's Darnold. And pass complete to Moore. And he's brought down, but not before a gain of 13, down to the 13. First and 10 of the red zone. I tell you what, it looks like he's shaking off that pick six just fine. It's not just defensive backs that have to have short memories. Quarterbacks utilize that as well. A much more confident throw right there. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. Here's Foreman. A nice display of powerful running, but it takes him only to the seven. He's dropped there. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. They've created a nice sustained drive off of plays like that. A nice strong run there that keeps them advancing the ball. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. They'll go with Foreman. And he is in. Touchdown, Carolina. Deontay Foreman, a three-yard touchdown run. And the Panthers are an extra point away from drawing level. But just power football there down near the goal line. Give it to him. He's able to push his way across. Yeah, they went heavy there. Sometimes you have those big offensive linemen come in after report like they're eligible. But all they're doing is getting a good stance blocking and getting their runner across the goal line. Eddie Pinheiro now for the extra point. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter and we're tied 7-7. Seven, seven. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it was finished off by Deontay Foreman on the touchdown run. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. Here's Sims now from his end zone. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So the Steelers offense getting set for their first drive. And leading them out there, we get a look at their six-three quarterback. And when you watch Kenny Pickett play, you see a young man who got better every season in college and really blossomed in his final campaign, took his game to a new level, and made him a first-round pick in the NFL. He's a type of kid who can beat you with his mind, beat you with his arm, and occasionally with his legs. A tough, skilled performer. Kenny Pickett, he's got some moxie to him. A run on first down, but it's not going to get him much. Maybe a yard, and that's all. These two teams all tied after one. Steeler football here to begin quarter number two. As they're looking at a second down and nine to go. Looking to throw, pick it. Finding Harris over the middle. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. And just three yards on the catch there, he couldn't get away. And it brings up third and five now. We'll need five on this play to move the sticks. From the gun, here's Pickett. Nowhere to go here, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Panthers. And they'll be at the 18-yard line. Great field position here in the red zone. But a pocket collapsed around him. I know we talk about it a lot, but a QB has to have that sixth sense, doesn't it? It really does. And I know of one team at one point was training their quarterback with that time frame. And anytime he didn't get rid of the ball within the, the right amount of time, they would blow a horn or blow a whistle to show him this is what that time is. Just what you're talking about, training him to understand 
This is the mount you have. Make sure the ball's gone. Didn't happen in this case. And they'll get him down right around the 16. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Right back to Hubbard. A yard in the wrong direction. Makes third down tougher. Third down and nine. Partner, one thing I was lousy at growing up, track and field. I could never anticipate the start before a race, but how about that backer? He figured it out, jumped the count, and turned it into a really nice play for his defense. So they've been unable to capitalize on the great field position as of yet. Here's third and nine. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Eddie Pinheiro on now. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. This is up and good from Pinheiro. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. So the fumble recovery had him set up in ideal field position, but they can muster only three points out of it. Yeah, when you're able to force turnovers, especially when it results in field position like they had, you really want to make it hurt. Here, they take the field goal. That's definitely not what they were hoping for. And Sims says, let's bring it out to the 25. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though, when they only gave up the field goal? And they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive. A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach would just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think the coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield and punch in the end zone without turning it over. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Pick it a look to throw it here. Open man. That's the tight end fire move. And they're able to get this one across the 35. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Pickett's throw complete. The ball comes out, and it's picked up by the Panthers. Okay, after those first two drives, I think there's a head coach who's going to be called for CSI. They're going to want some forensics on this. <laughs> what is going on with this ball club unable to hold on to the football and take care of it? Yeah, two straight fumbles for them to start out. Yeah, you would think that this team would come in ready to go, sometimes just mentally not prepared, and it shows up in these types of plays. Good starting position for the Panthers as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. Darnold's throw into the hands of the receiver, Chanel. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. down throw, Darnold. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Perfect example of the kind of attitude you have to have to play defensive back in the NFL. You want to be the only defender around, and you want them to challenge you. And on that play, he came through. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. They'll be in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. And that is incomplete, but a penalty flag coming in. This could be a first down. Well, obviously, they never want to see penalties on that defense, but this one, a little bit more significant there on the downfield pass play. And coaches preach it all the time. You can't put yourself in that kind of position if you're the defender. You've got to stay in a spot far downfield where you can play the ball without creating extra contact. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. 
the name of the game is always on defense, put pressure on the quarterback. And that's exactly what they've done today. It looks like they've got him a little bit rattled. That would have been the second interception in the first. And it'll be caught in the end zone for the Carolina touchdown by D.J. Moore. A 14-yard touchdown. And the Panthers will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Partner, to me, that touchdown had something that was kind of rooted in that group seeing the future. What I mean by that is they had a plan. Let's find a way to score right here before the half, and that'll give us momentum going into the second half, give us that cushion that we're looking for. They got that accomplished, scoring right before the half ended. Then Euro now to add the extra point. It's good to make it 17-7. A drive that time of six plays. And it concludes with a touchdown reception by D.J. Moore. Now after the touchdown, here's Pinheiro to kick it off. Sims going to go ahead and hold on to this one, and they'll start at the 25. The Steelers taking over now late in this first half. And with him down two scores, you wonder if they might try and put something together, even if it's just to get into field goal range. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. On first and 10, it's Pickett. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And it's picked up by the Panthers. And he will bring it back to about the 11-yard line. And now three drives, three fumbles. What's amazing about it is when we go around and watch practices, how many times do we see them put that sleeve over a football now to make it more slippery, yeah, slippery. and hard to handle? It's almost like they're playing with that sleeve on the ball right now. Was it three drives? Yep. Three, three fumbles? Three fumbles. It's time to change our luck some way, somehow. Focus, concentration, you'll hear those words on the bench in a big way right now. Now a first and 10 at the 11. So following the fumble recovery, here's Darnold. A quick throw, knocked away, and incomplete. And to put it mildly, this is a tough spot defensively. They have to come right back out and defend their red zone. But how about that good first step towards forcing them to settle for at least three points? I think they're also thinking bigger right now. Imagine being able to stop them totally and change the momentum. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. A final shot before the break. Darnold to the goal line, but it's incomplete. So we reach halftime here in a 10-point game. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though, let's take a look at the next-gen stats from the first half for the Steelers, and they will need to get this passing game in gear because they did not do much of anything in that first half, and it's why the scoreline is what it is. Meanwhile, for the Panthers, we check out their numbers on the ground as they'll try to keep the momentum going into the second half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Steelers going to get the football first here, trailing on the scoreboard as we are back underway on EA Sports. Here's Sims now from his end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result had he opted for the touchback. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively, virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. 
And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Picket to throw on first down. Steps away to his left. A throw left side, caught by the tight end, Flyer Muth. Breaks the tackle, he's got room to run. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Getting it to him in space pays off big time. That winds up going for 31. Well, so often now we're praising tight ends for their nimbleness and how they catch the ball downfield. But occasionally we get a reminder that tight ends They've got that tough guy aspect, too. How about him catching that short one there, shaking off tacklers, and turning that into an expansive gain downfield. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Harris running straight ahead. And he'll head out of bounds inside the 10, mark him down at the 9. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Now pick it. And he will throw this one out of the back of the end zone. It's incomplete. As defensive coordinators around the league tell me all the time, that throw is not for every quarterback because you've really got to drive the ball downfield. It's going to be a tight window for him to fit that one into. In this case, unsuccessfully. Holding offense. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against him. On second down, this is Harris. It's a pickup of three, but still a little work to do on third and goal. Working out of the gun, it's Pickett. Looking in zone, but it's incomplete. Let's get this defense going. They let the guys get downfield. But when push came to shove, they stood their ground. Now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. Boswell's kick is good. And they're back with it a touchdown. It's 17 to 10. So they were facing the deficit coming out of the locker room at intermission, and at least they're able to get the field goal to cut into that deficit. Yeah, now your offense feels pretty good about itself, right? A little bit more up to speed coming out of the break. You turn to your defense now and say, hey, we got three there. We're chipping into the lead. Can you help us out? Hold them. Let's get the ball back for us. And able to return this one all the way out to the other side of the field across the 50. Partner, when I was in college, we used to have these things called game maxims that we did before every game. One of them said, press the kicking game, for here's where the breaks are made. It's the area of hidden yardage. How about that return? Flipping the field, taking it past the 50, and getting things set up to start the series. The Panthers' offense now, they head back on the field for their first possession of the second half. Now Foreman. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If he gets strung up. And he is going to be taken down. And that should be the final play of this third quarter. He couldn't get away. He'll wind up losing a dozen yards, a 12-yard loss, and it brings up third. Thank <laughs> you. 
So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Now following the sack, Darnold and Carolina left with a third and long. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. The safety, Terrell Edmonds, picks it. Boy, that one was in the air for an agonizingly long time. Uh, just begging to be picked off, wasn't it? It's one thing if you're throwing a ball like that, trying to throw someone open or lead them into an area. But that ball needed to be thrown with a lot more conviction. As a result, it's an easy interception. Out comes the Steeler offense now, ready to see what they can do here. The interception sets them up with an opportunity to erase this fourth quarter deficit. Now this series could very well determine our outcome. And now look at this, big game, but a fumble. But this will fortunately wind up out of bounds. Second time he's fumbled in this game. Fortunate for him, this one goes out of bounds. And the key for him now is how much equity have you built up with your coaching staff? How much equity have you built up with your team to continue to get opportunities? Fortunate that one went out of bounds, saved him from a turnover. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. First and 10, here's Pickett. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for not. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And he was able to shed one tackle but could not get away from there. This is third and two. Maybe the biggest play in this football game. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Three yards there, good enough to keep the drive moving. I haven't met a football team yet that runs the ball successfully that doesn't talk about having an attitude to be a running football team, right? you got to be able to put your nose in there, smell where the first down sticks are, and get there. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. To the air on first down with Pickett. Oh, no, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Panthers. And he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. 20. And he takes it into the end zone. It's a fumble recovery and a touchdown for the Panthers. This was a close game. They needed a little breathing room. Boy, they got it right there on that return for a touchdown. Yeah, we would say that this could be huge. Forget it. It was huge. Gave him a comfortable lead. Pinheiro now to add the extra point. And the lead is up to 14. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. And Sims says let's bring it out to the 25. So here's Pickett and the Steelers. Down by two touchdowns. Two minutes, 17 seconds to go. The turnover does give them life, but they still need two scores. Pick it now on first down. 
Harris has it over the middle. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So the Steelers with the football as we get you reset. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Now a first down carry for Harris. And he is going to lose yardage here. The tackle for loss goes to Matthew Ioannidis. Really nice play. Pick it to throw. Pass complete to Harris. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Looking to throw here. Pick it. That's complete to his tight end fire move. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as they stop it prior to what will be an important fourth down. Pickett, fourth down, desperation time. And they hit him as he throws, as this one's going to go straight down to the turf. Incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Panthers will get the football back. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? The slim just left town, and now they're down to none. Yes, yeah, exactly right. got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 46. A run by Foreman to start the drive. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. Second and 12 and you'd have to assume another all-out effort to stop the run is coming. They run again with Foreman. A solid stiff arm. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll get it with just under 90 seconds remaining. After the run by Foreman, here's first and 10. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. It doesn't matter whether you watch high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. It's a pickup of four, but they're still a yard short here with fourth down, fourth coming. So many things go into making a good play on defense. In this situation, just not being blown out of the way was a big start and then a nice tackle to finish things off. They'll run for it. This is Foreman. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. It's a gain of three there, and that should be just about all she wrote. So this one is over, a victory for Carolina, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. 
and they closed him out with a big-time performance down the stretch.